today. This is the easy way to sell on eBay. And this is my easiest way to sell on eBay. So I wanted to share with you what I do to make selling my selling process go a little bit faster. So thanks for taking the time out to join me today. So most of you know me, but my name is Dana Crawford, and you can find my website at powersellingmom.com. All of my information is there. I've been an eBay seller since 97, and I make a living full-time on eBay. And someone asked me the other day, what do you like more, to teach eBay or to sell on eBay? And I really had to think hard about that, and it's actually 50-50 because I don't think I'll ever stop selling on eBay. I love, I love doing it. And I love teaching and helping others as well. So it's 50-50. So thank you again for joining me. Um, I won't bore you with all of my information, but you can find it all online. And please like me on Facebook. I have a business page, Santa Crawford One, at, on Facebook and the other, whatever social media that you're using. A quick thank you to Constant Contact. They actually are providing uh, the webinar service for me. So a special thanks to them for allowing me to use their platform. I am a certified uh, local expert with Constant Contact, and I do teach e to bleh. I do teach the power of email marketing, and I've been doing that since 2007, and I love it. And they're actually running a special right now for a 30% discount to anyone that joins. So please. You can go to powersellingmom.constantcontact.com so that I get credit. Or feel free to follow, when you get the follow-up email, um, you'll get a copy of this presentation, and there will be a link to sign up for the free trial. You can have a free 60-day trial. But if you do want to join right now, you will get a 30% discount for the next three months, which is an awesome offer, and they only do that like once or twice a year. So anybody that does uh, get on board with email marketing, they can join my Facebook group that is focused on training, and I do a ton of webinars on email marketing. I have several coming up next week when I get back from Vegas. So that's my story, and we're moving on. So now the legal stuff. Please do not sell my uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> do not sell my presentation on eBay. And, uh, of course, we're not live, so you can't take my photo, thank goodness. But um, if you do, and please don't take screenshots. If you do need, well, you're getting a recording. So just relax and enjoy the presentation. You don't need to take a million notes unless you want to. I would say sit back, put your feet up, have a cup of coffee, and then um, you can review the presentation at your convenience later and pause it as needed. So we're not here today for those of you that do not have an eBay account or a PayPal account. I don't go in step by step how to join eBay or how to join PayPal because it seriously is easy. So you're just going to go to eBay.com and you're going to go to PayPal.com and you're going to click on register and just follow the prompts and before you know it, your account is set up. So the main thing is that you go set up your account. That's the first part of getting started. Now our agenda today is about research, listing styles, being on the fast track to getting your listing done. We're going to talk a little bit about eBay shopping. I'm going to give you some of my tips. And we're going to have Q&A, not Q&Q. &Q. I noticed I had a typo in one of the things. I was like, oh, Q&Q, &Q, what is that? That means no answers, all questions, no answers. So we will have a Q&A at the end, as I mentioned. So this presentation is also not about shipping. I'm going to do another day about shipping because if I put everything, this is like a breakdown of the presentations that I do live in, in Florida and Georgia for the live workshop events. So I've kind of condensed it into a one-hour webinar. And then the, well, we go less than an hour, but and then also the shipping part is a whole other webinar. So it's better to just learn a little bit at a time. So today is about getting the fast track to listing. So if you don't learn anything at all from me today, 
the absolute most important part to be successful on eBay is to research before you list. I'm a consultant. I get calls from all over the world, believe it or not. And people call me and they'll, you know, for example, someone will call and say, oh, eBay sucks. I can't make any money. Um, and then I'll go in and look at their listings, and they're listing stuff that nobody wants. So you may get away with that for a while, but after a couple of years of having something on there that nobody wants, then maybe it's time to put it in the garage sale box or send it out to hospice or whichever uh, nonprofit that you give to. But this is the absolute most important part. Now, I'm also a consignment seller, and people bring me stuff, and they'll say, this is worth millions. And I know it's worth millions because I read about it in a collector book. That Elvis record collector book says this record is worth $100,000. Or they saw it on the road show, the antique road show. They'll say, oh, this, this is what they said on this TV show or another TV show where they project that it's worth this amount of money when really they haven't done the current market value search on eBay. And this is what it's all about. We have to know what the current market value on eBay. Or an appraiser, I get people that will bring me their jewelry and earn gold and diamonds, and they'll say, oh, this appraisal says it's worth $35,000. But, yes, that's an insurance appraisal in case you get robbed. But it's a little different than, you know, what you're actually going to be able to sell it for. So, Generally, if someone brings me an appraisal from a jeweler, it's an insurance appraisal, I cut it in thirds and then um, try my best to sell it for that price. Or Google said it. Hey, I saw it on Google. It's got to be true. So these are the things that can fool you into thinking that items are worth millions. Now, the first part of doing our search on eBay, here's a typical eBay page. And at the top of every eBay page is a search bar. And you just type in what you're searching for. So this is where you would start when you go shopping, actually. And you're going to type in a few keywords in that top bar. So when you type in what you're looking for, like everything you can think of, you can find on eBay. So you would type in what you're searching for when you're shopping. However, when you're researching, we're going to go to the right of the toolbar, and we're going to click on the word advanced. Excuse me. Coffee's sinking in. Okay, so you click on the word advanced. And when you do that, it'll bring you to the advanced search section of eBay. And this is where you're going to type in a few of your keywords here. Type it in on this search bar. And don't worry about anything at all else on this page except check marking the box that says completed listings because we want to look at items that have ended in the last 10 days or a month. It depends on what category, how far it goes back. And then we're going to click on the word search. This is it. So again, in review, we're going to type in today's search. We're going to put in Starbucks coffee mug. And this is your homework. I want you to put in these three, ver the three, three words, Starbucks coffee mug, and then you check mark the box completed listings, and then click on search. Now, what happens is the eBay system will pull up all of the Starbucks coffee mug, all the people that have had those three words in their title, and they, I wish I would have seen this one that, ended at a penny with no bids, <laughs> but it brings up all of the listings, and it had 42,684 listings had Starbucks coffee mug. Well, that's a lot, right? So we can see that we're not going to sit there and go through 42,000 listings because we're going to be here for a week. So what we want to do is we want to um, adjust the sort bar. And the sort bar is located on the right of the page. And we're going to go ahead and click on that. And it's a drop-down box. And it will allow us to reorganize. Come on. It will allow us to reorganize the search or the sort. So it will take those 42,684 listings. And we want to take a look at the highest price first. So my motto is show me the money. Let's see which items are selling, which Starbucks coffee mugs are selling for the most amount of money. 
Now, side note, I have the website Power Selling Mom, and it came into creation because I started helping moms. So I had this mission to help moms. I was a single mom, three kids, and three jobs. I learned how to do eBay, and I couldn't wait to start sharing that with other moms because I feel that I've kind of perfected it. So I would tell my mom to start with three boxes and take that first box and go around the house and put stuff in it that you don't want, kids, toys, whatever it is, and then take that box and come and sit at your computer, pull up completed listings, and pull out the first item and type in a few keywords, adjust it to highest price first, and start doing your research on your product. This is how we determine whether it's worth listing on eBay or not. We adjust that to highest price first, and then the system will, will recategorize everything, and it will put the highest priced items at the top and the lowest priced items at the bottom. So if it's in green, it means that it's sold. If it's in red or black, it means it did not sell. But we want to learn from both. This is why I don't recommend only searching for sold, because you're not educating yourself about um, the current reality of current market values. So we need to become more and more educated on search. So then we know we learn what to look for when we're out treasure hunting. So here we see um, we we see this first mug sold for six hundred and eleven dollars. It had thirty two bids, so that means they had an auction. And then the next one sold for six hundred and ten. It had thirty one bids. And I want to be like them when I grow up. I'm going to click on the bid history, and I'm probably going to list mine just like they listed theirs because it worked for them. So the thing is, you want to follow success. Now, you'll notice down at the bottom it says someone like this. Now, we're going to come back to that in a moment, but I just wanted to point that out since it's in our face. We are going to research and learn from all of these listings. So here's a Cleveland mug. There's was a buy it now, and it sold for $299.95. And then below, you see this 200 reusable mugs or cups. They had listed for $290 as a buy it now. That didn't work out for them. So we do not want to be like them. So we want to pay attention to the successful. Oh, here comes my cat now. Come on. All right, hold on. i got to open this so you can look out the window. All right. So we want to pay attention to what kind of words do they use in the title. We want to look at was it an auction or a buy it now. And they have free shipping or not. Now, many times, free shipping is going gonna, is gonna to seal the deal whether you have a sale or not. Now, I've, I've kind of gotten away from free shipping. I kind of break it up so some is free, some is not, and that it all comes in. And it has not affected my DSR. But that's another topic for down the road. Now, research recap. First, we're going to go to advanced search. We're going to go type in a few keywords, checkbox, completed listings, click on search, adjust your sort bar to highest price first, and follow success. That's it. That's the simple recap of researching products on eBay. So as I mentioned, you have that box full of stuff. You pull one item out at a time and research it on eBay. And then those other two boxes, you mark one called eBay, and then you mark the other box, Goodwill or Garage Sale, whichever you want to do. And then as you're looking them up, if one Starbucks mug is only going for um, 5 bucks, then I'm probably going to put a dollar on it, and I'm going to put it in my garage sale box, price it right then and there. And then when I have enough boxes for my garage sale, everything's priced, we're ready to rock and roll. If I have, um, I don't do garage sales anymore, then I just put it all in my hospice or Goodwill box, whichever company you want to donate to. And then that way you can um, get all of your products sorted quickly. Okay. Now we're going to talk about listing an item on eBay. Now that we know how to research and we've got our box loaded with stuff ready to list on eBay, I'm going to talk about the fast track to listing. 
But first, there are three basic eBay listing styles. We have the auction. And in an auction, you can start a bid as low as a penny. Now, keep in mind, if you start your auction at a penny and only one bidder comes along and it sells for a penny, guess what? Yep, you have to ship it with a smile. <laughs> you have to ship that off and treat it just like someone that paid $1,000 because they deserve it. They, they, were the, they won it fair and square. It is a binding contract. So pay attention on that. The second style is an auction with a buy it now. The buyers would have the option to either bid on it or buy it now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have fixed price. The seller sets the price and the buyer can either purchase the item or they can make an offer. Those are the three basic listing styles. Now I always get questions about this so I added it to the presentation is reserve. I'm not a fan of reserves. I don't even like to talk about them. But in case you're wondering, a reserve is where the seller sets a hidden price from the public. And you do not have to sell it if it is not met. So if I list that item for a penny auction, and I have a reserve of $500 or $50 or whatever it is, then it only goes, say, $50. And then it, um, the auction goes up to $48, and it ends at $48. I do not have to sell it. I'm not a fan of reserves because there is a fee, and I don't go into a lot of fees, but there also there's a fee for a reserve, and it's kind of pricey. So research will determine your listing style. Should you do an auction? Should you do a fixed price? Should you start your item? Should you start your price high or start it low? These are all the things that you're going to keep in mind when you're doing your research because, again, you're going to follow success. So that's how you're going to know which direction to go. And then roll the dice. <laughs> so the fast track to eBay listing. There is what's called sell one like this, and I showed you that earlier on that Starbucks mug. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the way this works, is you see the the item, this is a Starbucks mug, and these are still out there, by the way. I picked one up at the mall in Ocala, and it was um, the Starbucks store in the Paddock Mall in Ocala, and it was, it was $5.99. And I, as soon as I saw it, I was so excited, I could hardly take it off the shelf and get it to the cash register because I had researched these before and I knew how well they sell. So like, you know, you hit the jackpot and I sold it for $85 and I actually listed it while I was sitting in Starbucks having my latte and I listed it on eBay and it took two days and I sold it for $85 for one. So these Starbucks ones are still out there in Starbucks. So if you see one, give me a call. <laughs> um, otherwise, all I would do is click on sell one like this. And I can list this really fast while I'm having my latte. And what happens is it'll bring up the same category. It'll already put it in the category that was successful for that person for me. And then it'll bring up the title. Don't worry about this other stuff because I have a store. So don't worry about that. Just ignore it. But it'll bring up the title. And I can edit the title if I need to. I can change the wording around. Like I like to have my word new at the front of my sentence. And I like to switch it up a little bit. I may add the word cup as well as mug. So the quick tip I'm going to give you about titles is think of your title as bait on the hook. It's not a sentence. It doesn't need to make sense. You don't need to put look beautiful, pretty item. <laughs> Put all keywords that will help people find your item in search. And so then the next thing we do is, is it new or is it used? So that would be it, to start the ball rolling to get the listing done. So the second fast track to listing an item on eBay is to go to a current live listing. So say you're browsing around on eBay and you discover something and it's like, oh, I have one like that. And let me just let me just get that listed. And so all you do is click on sell now. 
very easy. eBay has made life so much easier for us. Those of you that have been um, long-term sellers like myself, it's now so easy. I can get listings done so quickly compared to back in the day. So take advantage of being in this new age. <laughs> so click on Sell Now. And then what happens, again, it'll pull up the category for me. It's already in place. And then it'll bring in the title for me that's already in place. I can adjust any keywords that I need to adjust. I skip the subtitle. I'm not a fan of subtitles. They charge you 50 cents for using it, and it's not it's it's not found in search. So I don't I don't bother with that. And then is it new or used? So the third easy way to list on eBay is to go right to that top search bar that we talked about earlier, where you would do your shopping. You would type in a few keywords in that search bar and excuse me we're on selling we're not searching <laughs> wrong wrong topic so on selling we're going to click on the word sell it's above the search bar we're not searching right now we're selling so you click on sell and now it's not going to pull in a category because you don't they don't eBay doesn't know what you're selling so you're going to type in a few keywords in the search in the title in a new listing and this example, I'm going to type in Starbucks Coffee Mug Florida. doesn't have to make sense, just what I am going to be selling. And then eBay is going to make category suggestions. They're going to say, okay, we suggest you put it in the Starbucks category, obviously. Or I could add a second category if I wanted to. There is a fee for that. You can only have two categories. So the first category may be free, but I would have to pay a fee, 15 cents average for the second category. But, in this case, we're picking one category. No matter which way you list it, if it's, buy it, if it's um, the fast track of sell one like this, or sell now, or sell, those are the three things to get an item listed on eBay, they all have the same basic info. You're going to have a title. You're also going to have a category. You're going to choose the category. You're going to check box, is it new or is it used? We're going to add photos, which I'm going to go into. We're going to have a description, which I'll go into. We're going to set the price, which we're going to know which direction to go with the price because of our research. We're going to have shipping terms, which I'm going to go into. And we're going to have a return policy. This is it, folks. This is your checklist. No matter which way you list on eBay, this is what you need to know on your listing. So this is this is your checklist, no matter which style you use, this is the fast track of listing on eBay. So now, listing an item continued. So we've got our category, we've got our title, is it new or used? Now the next section that you come to of this listing process, no matter which style you use, is to add the photos. Now those of you that are advanced, I'm gonna give you my little favorite tip, and that is I go through my entire listing on my laptop and I do not add photos. I just save it for later and then I do the next one, save it for later, the next one, save it for later. And when I have five to 10 all saved for later in my draft, then I go in the other room, I pull up my iPhone and I pull up the first listing and I take the photo and it goes live. Add the photo, it goes live. And I can list really fast that way. So that's another way for the advanced people or to think about. Now, those of you that have your photos stored on your computer, then all you're going to do is click on the computer. In this example, I had, um, I did a webinar for the Sierra Club Foundation. So I was showing sleeping bags that day. So I just used that photo. So I would click on my computer and it would pull in the photos from my computer. I can also edit the photos if I need to right directly in eBay. Remember that first photo is the number one most important photo, by the way. And I don't pay extra for all this stuff. If it says free, yes, I'm all over it. But if I have to pay 35 cents for something, I definitely don't do it. But that's just me. Okay, the next part is the description box. And guess what? That's about describing the item. 
So now we're going to talk about describing the item. So I tell people, take the item, put it right in front of you, and stare at it, and, and type it out like you're going to tell somebody about it that can't see it, obviously, or a blind person. You're going to describe the item. You want to keep your listing short, sweet, easy to read. Don't overdo it. There's nothing worse than going into somebody's listing and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and I think I need my attorney because there's so much there I'm afraid to buy it because there's something hidden in those words that scares me. So you're going to scare people off if you have too much information in your listing. I don't need to know, okay, I watch Grandma on Tuesday, so I only ship on Wednesday, and you know, nobody wants to know about the drama and what's going on. They want to know, describe the item, darn it. Tell me about the item. I hate it when I go into a listing. It's like, oh, my God, can you just tell me about the darn item? And then I like to keep mine less margin. Now, I'm giving you my advice, what works for me and how I, I like to do things. So less margin, which means... I'm going to have about five words or six words and then hit return or enter and then go to the next sentence. So I want short sentences and I want them all in the left margin so that they show up super nice on every single mobile device. I also like to use the number 18 font, so I will make my letters big. I'm old now, so I like to have all of my letters large so that everybody else who's old <laughs> and people who it can't see very well, it doesn't matter. Everybody's happy because it's so darn easy to read my listings. They're not overly big in your face, but they're just the right size. Also use black text. Now that seems like a no-brainer, right? However, I met a guy, paid me big money for consulting, he paid big money for some uh, graphic artist to create his template for his eBay listing. And so he said, gosh, my sales have slowed down. I don't know what's going on. And I said, okay, well, let's take a look. And I'm looking at everything. And then I always pull up my iPhone to look at somebody's listing. When I pulled up my iPhone, he had absolutely no description. And I was like, uh, sir, you have to describe your item." And he was like, what are you talking about? And I went to the laptop then, and I pulled it up on the laptop, and his description box was black background with white font. So what was happening was the iPhone was blocking out his background and only shown his white letters, which, guess what? They're invisible. So stick with black letters. Include flaws. If the item has a flaw, make sure that you describe that flaw. If there's a stain on it, make sure you describe the stain on it. Because if you don't, you're going to get a return. So it's really important to always include any issues. And the final thing is to have a positive statement. I'm a firm believer. I try to be as positive as I can and to reflect that on my eBay listing in a positive manner. So if you do say it has a flaw, well, the colors are brilliant. So you can end it on a positive note. It gives a good feeling to your listing. Don't be telling me, oh, I'm not going to leave you feedback unless you leave me feedback. Don't leave me feedback. If, you know, it's like a whiny tone that makes me feel kind of bad vibe. And I don't want to shop from you now because I think you're going to be a problem seller. Now, I'm just sharing with you how I feel when I'm shopping on eBay. So I try to think like a shopper when I'm doing my listing. So keep that in mind. You want to see any examples? Now, my eBay store actually is on vacation right now. But my eBay store, I bought the URL, the domain name, ASKDANNA.com. That will take you right to my eBay store. And you'll see it's on vacation right now. So all my products are hidden. Um, but you might be able to go to um, ended listings and take a look at some of my listings. But it will be coming off vacation mode probably um, the Thursday, no, Friday, because I'm going to have to have time to ship. Friday I'll have it off vacation, the 19th. Okay, the next part is we're going to come to, we've got our title. Is it new or used? We've got our description. We've got our photos. 
now, the section is, is it auction or fixed price? Now, eBay is going to make suggestions to you. You can take or leave it because we kind of know what direction we're going to go because of our research. So say we're going to have an auction, and then eBay will say, well, do you want to add a buy it now to this auction? So you just check mark the box if you choose to have a buy it now added. You can have a one-day auction, a three-day auction, a five-day auction, or a seven-day auction, or you can go with a 10-day auction. Now, auctions, seven-day auctions are free, which I'll go into, but seven days are generally free, but a one-day auction is now a dollar, and a three-day, five-day. I just sold a bunch of gold. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I had a client come to me, and they brought me all, I sell on consignment, she brought me all this stuff, and then she had a bag of gold that she was going to take to the pawn shop. And I was like, wait a minute, you're going to take that to the pawn shop? What about me? And she said, oh, I didn't know if you'd want to sell this stuff. And I was like, absolutely. And then I said, well, you know what? If you want to take it to the pawn shop, take it. And whatever they offer you, I'll give you double of what they're going to offer you. And I'll just buy it from you. And she was like, oh, wow. And I said, or... We could put it on eBay and we could just split it and see see where we go from there. And so she ended up giving it to me. I put it on eBay and I ran it Memorial Day weekend. So I had one-day auctions. I didn't mind paying the dollar because it was gold. So every auction started at, well, my first auction started at like 7 in the morning and then every hour up until about 10 at night. And I did really well. I sold all the gold. Well, there's a couple, couple strays left. But it went really well. and. I'm a believer now on one day and one day auctions on high end stuff. But again, your research is going to help you determine that. You can also schedule your listings. This is a brilliant thing. Now, you can, um, I call this my vacation setting. So I can, we went to England last year and Ireland. And when we went, I put in a bunch of listings and I had them all scheduled to go live before I got home. So they went live the last week before I got home, and they ended two days after I got home. So that way I could have a couple days to rest because in the past, I've had listings end the day I got home, and oh, my God, what a nightmare because you're trying to recoup from your vacation, and then you got to do a ton of shipping. So make sure that you have that spread out a little bit to give yourself a break when you get home. But it's it's a great tool. And another quick tip for you is when you schedule those, it's 10 cents, but it's only 10 cents when it goes live. So say you you happen to say, well, I have this schedule, but actually I'm ready to have it go live now. You can take the schedule, shut the schedule off and have it go live, and it didn't doesn't cost you 10 cents. So your next choice is going to tell eBay is how you're going to ship it. And again, they're going to make suggestions, so it's going to be easy. Do you want to ship it priority mail? We suggest it costs about this amount of dollars. We suggest do you want to offer free shipping? So you just check off whatever it is that you want to use. And again, your research is going to help you determine what kind of shipping style. I have more webinars coming up on shipping, so you'll be on my list to get an invite. Now, you're also going to see an area for the global shipping program. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but I am going to tell you say yes to global shipping because if you don't, you're going to lose business. You're missing business opportunity. The, the easy part of the global shipping program is you just say yes. So there's countries that are in the global shipping program ranging from the U.K. to Canada to Australia. There's a long list. You can research that if you want, but who cares? It's, well, all we do is say yes to the global shipping program, and then when it comes shipping day, all you do is box it up and ship it to Kentucky. Whatever your domestic price is for shipping, that's what you're going to pay. And then eBay is like the fulfillment center. They're going to actually send it off for you. Next, after you say yes to the global shipping there's also, you are going to need a shipping scale to be successful on eBay. I highly recommend a shipping scale. You can't be successful without it. And I know a great place you can buy one. Yes, eBay. Or my husband bought me a beautiful one for our wedding anniversary. 
I actually wanted it. And he got it at Harbor Freight. So there's places that you can get them, but they're also on eBay. Your local USPS post office sells them in the lobby generally as well. You're also going to need good measuring tape. Make sure you get an accurate measuring tape. I learned this hard lesson. I bought on eBay a bunch of measuring tapes from China, and I didn't mind that it was going to take a long time because they were red, yellow, blue, green. So they were in these cool eBay colors, going to be the hit of my next event. I'm going to, I'm going to have them as drawings and giveaways, and I was all excited. So I bought all these measuring tapes. I was measuring a coat to list on eBay, got it all listed. Somebody messages me and says, hey, are you sure the measurements are right on that coat? It looks like it should be, you know, longer. And I and generally, when I know in my mind that I have measured something, I generally type it in and say, oh, yeah, it's accurate. I measured it. But in this instance, I knew that I used that measuring tape, and I thought, you know what, I better go check that. So I went and got Grandma's um, seamstress tape. Went back, and sure enough, it was way off. I was like, oh, my God, what else did I measure with this? All of those China measuring tapes went in the garbage. So pay attention, double check. If you have any measuring tapes, get a, a yardstick made in the USA, get some things and double check them and just make 100% sure because you'll get returned. Also, choose package or thick envelope. Just choose that one unless you have a giant box, of course, and it's a large or you have to adjust it. But the normal is just package or thick envelope. We're on the fast track to listing. And then you'll see a list of what style you're going to ship the item. The fast track one to use is called USPS Standard Post, two to nine business days. Now, we're not actually probably going to ship that way when it comes shipping day, which I'll go into another time. But just to get our listing live, we're going to use USPS standard post two to nine business days. The chances are I'm going to ship it priority mail, which on shipping day is going to probably be the way it's going to go. They're going to be over the moon because they're going to get it quicker. So just to get the listing set up and don't be overwhelmed with all of the choices, USPS standard post two to nine business days. Now you're also going to see offer local pickup only as an option. I personally recommend never, ever, 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 ever use local pickup only. The reason is if you have a couch and somebody from Georgia or the next state wants has been looking for a couch, well, now they're not going to see it as easily. It's not going to show up in their search because you've got local pickup only. So in your zip code area within a 100 miles or whatever is only going to be showing up, and it's not going to reach out to the next state. I had somebody come to me, well, my good friend Kathy, she was trying to sell a tanning bed, and I went in and looked, and I was like, hey, Kathy, you have local pickup only. And so she adjusted it, and she sold it in a week. So I'm serious when I tell you, if I could start my eBay life over, I actually would sell furniture and car parts. <laughs> car parts because I, they sell so well, and furniture because so many people are afraid to sell it. And there's nothing to it. All you do is list that couch and then put, you would choose freight shipping where this type, uh, instead of package or thick envelope, we choose freight. And then in your description, you would put, we'll ship anywhere in the world, buyer makes arrangement for shipping. And that's how I've done it. My husband won't let me bring furniture home anymore. Otherwise, I would be selling furniture like crazy because I, I think it's fun. But that's another topic. But skip the local pickup only. Nothing is too big to be able to ship. Just have them pick it up or make arrangements for shipping in your description box. So the next part is to add your email, which is your PayPal ID. Whatever, uh, whatever way that you join PayPal, that is, would be your email. That is your user ID with PayPal. Put in the zip code of where your item is located. If you're selling something for someone else and it's located in their zip code, make sure that you put the accurate zip code of where the item is located so that uh, the shipping status will be correct. And then handling time. I recommend one business day. Now, but don't choose one business day if you cannot absolutely ship in one business day. 
personally, when I'm shopping on eBay, if I see it's going to take longer, I actually will skip it because I'm crazy like that. I want to get my stuff right away. And I'm sure there's other people that <laughs> shop that way too. So I try to always say one business day. So one business day means that if they buy it on on um, Friday at 3 o'clock, you don't generally have to have that shipped until Monday at 3 o'clock, before 3 o'clock. It's business day. You don't have to ship on Saturday, although I do, but it's up to you. People get excited when they get their items quicker. And then returns. I recommend always to have a return policy. If I'm shopping on eBay and they do not accept returns, I think, what's wrong with it, or it's shady, or what are they hiding from me? It makes me afraid to buy from them. So I think it's always accept returns. Very rarely have I had returns, but I will put on my return area on eBay, not in my description box, in my return area, I will put buyer pays return shipping plus a 20% restocking fee. Now, eBay will actually let us charge a restocking fee. I've only actually charged it once, and because I would tell the person, oh, I'm going to waive the restocking fee for you. And then they're over the moon. They leave you great feedback. We've got good, you know, happy times. So it's a good idea to put it in there because, in my opinion, it scares off the girl who was thinking about wearing the dress on the weekend and then returning it the first of the week kind of thing. Buyer repay, or I'll word that again. Buyer pays um, return shipping plus a 20% restocking fee. Or you could do 10% restocking fee, whatever you're comfortable with. So the next step, now that we've gone through that entire process, the, the title, is it new or used, the category, the description, the photos, the shipping area, the returns area, we've got all of that. That is it. And then we can either preview it, you can take a look and see how it looks, or you, as I mentioned, you can click on save for later, or it can go live and you can list it. But here is the absolute good news on this process. It will not blow up. So, so many people are afraid to try eBay because they're like, oh, it's, it scares me. I don't know. I'm afraid that it's going to blow up or I'm afraid something's going to not be right. But the thing is, it's not in stone. You can go in there and you can go through this process of, of a listing and you can delete it. You can save it. You can go through it again tomorrow. You can list another coffee mug tomorrow. After we get off this webinar, go pull something off your shelf, look it up, and then go through the process. And if you're not comfortable, just say, you know what? I'm going to delete it, or I'm going to I'm going to try it again. I'm going to I'm going to follow this step again. I'm going to list it this way, sell one like this, and do it again. So nothing's in stone; it won't blow up. But the main thing is for you to practice and have fun with it. Because if it ain't fun, as they say, don't do it. Because it's for me, I love eBay, obviously, but it's a lifestyle. It's not a job. I love listing on eBay. It's like, gosh, I, I'm kind of upset that I have to fly out because I, I have a couple things lined up that I picked up yesterday at Bell's Outlet, and I can't wait to get them listed now. So a few final words and helpful tips. Go shopping. That's the first tip I'm going to tell you. Anything that you possibly need, you can find on eBay. So I want you to go shopping because that is absolutely a part of your education. When you go buy a few things, you get pay attention to how did they ship it, how did they package it, um, you know, how did it go. I even buy chapstick on eBay. So I can go on there and do a search for lip balm because it is a copyright protected word, chapstick. But if there is chapstick brand, you can find it, sometimes in cherry and different flavors, sometimes rare flavors. And I'm a chapstick addict, and then my, now my kids are chapstick addicts. So I go in, and I'll buy chapstick, and I'll send it to the kids. So the other beauty about eBay is when you shop, you can have all of your family's addresses saved, and you could buy something and have it shipped right to them. And so my kids are always calling me, gosh, okay, Mom. You can let up on the stuff. I've got enough bath towels now. 
when there's a bath towel sale. I can't help it. Kids need towels. What can you do? So go shopping. Everyday stuff. Here's my list. Lip balm, pet toys, lotion. I even go in. I don't have any grandkids. I have grand dogs and grand cats. And I'll go in, and I have big, big grand dogs. So I'll go in and buy them big bones. That if you buy them at the stores, they're pretty expensive, and they love them. They're the real bones. You do a search on eBay, and then uh, I have a grand cat, and I get I get catnip for that cat, and and special treats. I have them sent direct. Hand lotion, coffee. I bought Starbucks coffee on eBay many times, and the great thing is when you buy it on eBay and you got the stars, you can actually add that to your uh, Starbucks account, but that's another. Shipping scale and poly bag, everything. There's, oh, I had pictures. I forgot. Okay, here we go. Toys, sunscreen, coffee, coffee mugs, coffee to drink. Your shipping scale, now you could do a search, it's called Saga Postal Scale. This one goes up to 66 pounds. This guy sold 4,539 of them. I actually own one of these scales, and they are nice. This guy, um, he sells them all the time. I was buying them from him and then selling them in Ocala. I've sold out of them, and I'm just I'm done with that, so just go direct to him. You can also get poly bags. I like to get these for anything that is under a pound. If it's over a pound, it's going in a priority mail bag. But if it's under a pound, I get the poly bags. They're great for jewelry, little things, and I buy them on eBay. So in a snapshot, eBay has over 110 million items are available worldwide. Blech. Worldwide. Over 90 million active users worldwide. Approximately 7 million items are added every day. A pair of shoes sells every 8 seconds. A motor part or accessory sells every second. So I want to sell eBay motors. A cell phone every 6 seconds. And a car every 90 seconds. So one thing they don't mention is a forklift sells every 4 hours. Crazy, right? So this is why my motto is, there is plenty of eBay for us all to be blessed and prosper. I'm a strong believer in that. I never knew that until I went to eBay headquarters years ago, and I went into this big room, and I saw for myself how all of these giant screens were set up, and it was like, oh, my God, my jaw just dropped seeing, okay, this many things are being listed in this category, and this is being listed, and these, this is how fast people are joining the site. And it just made me realize that I'm just this little grain of sand in this eBay sea. So there's plenty of room. Everyone on this call, we can all make money on eBay. People say, well, how much money can you make on eBay? You can go any direction you want. It's up to you. If you want to make a lot of money, you want to just get rid of some stuff, you want to just pay some bills, it's, it's your choice. That's another webinar. But I do like to share my husband's story. My husband, he's from Belfast, Northern Ireland. He used to type with two fingers. Maybe he types with three now, I'm not sure. But he does type with, uh, he started with two fingers. He didn't know a thing about eBay. He had a steel coating uh, blacktop business. And back in, when the economy failed and uh, parking lots and big industry were not getting their, their parking lots done anymore. So his business slowed down. So I said, okay, honey, of course, he had a good eBay instructor. And I showed him how to look stuff up on eBay. Okay, start going to completed listings, look stuff up, then you'll figure out what to list and da-da-da. So he subscribed to a ladies' newsletter in town. Another reason I love newsletters and the power of newsletters. He subscribed to her newsletter. So you could do a search in your, uh, do a Google search for estate sale, the name of your town. And then there will be, I'm sure, some in your community or close by that you can subscribe to their newsletter. So she sent him a newsletter, and it said um, she was had camera equipment. And all this camera equipment was coming up at this estate sale. But this one, she was doing a silent auction, so you had to email bids in. So my husband emailed a bid in of $2,500. Long story short, somebody else won. She calls him up and says, hey, Jimmy, um, 
do you still want the camera equipment? And he said, well, yeah, at, at the 2500 And she said, well, the high bidder at four grand could not come up with the money. The next bidder couldn't come up with the money, so it's down to you. So do you have the 2500 And he said, absolutely. So he went and picked it up. So he came home, listed the first lens on eBay for 2500 And he did $17,000 in two months listing camera equipment on eBay. Now, here's a man that knew nothing about eBay. He knew nothing about camera equipment, but he knew how to research products and look stuff up. So it just goes to show you, you can go any direction, but research is everything. Again, my name is Dana Crawford. Now watch your mailbox. Now after this presentation, it'll go on the recording, and then um, it's in the next hour or so, you'll receive the follow-up. I am going to stop recording now, and I'm going to take questions. And so if you have any questions, be sure to type them in now, and we will switch over to that. So thank you so much. We will have more webinars on shipping and all different kinds of things coming up in the future. So thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now as soon as I find it.